I'd like to thank Blueland for sponsoring this video. Do you have a leaking iron? By far the number one complaint that I receive about irons is that they leak. For some, they leak when they steam. For others, the iron leaks after they've been using it for a little while. And for others, they find that the iron leaks straight out of the box. You need a good, reliable iron to quilt well. So we're going to go through the top eight reasons why irons leak and how you can avoid it. So stick with me and I'll show you how to do it. Hi, I'm Karen Brown of Just Get It Done Quilts. I give you tips, tricks, and strategies to help you make the quilt that you want to make. And if you like what you see, please hit that subscribe button. I am so close to 300,000 subscribers. I would really appreciate your support. If you learn to iron well, you will see an immediate difference in your blocks. Your seams will be straighter, your blocks will be squarer, and they won't be so small. Especially if you use a really good ironing technique every single time. But what happens when your iron is fighting against you and you have water leaking everywhere? It's frustrating, time consuming, and distracts you from enjoying your hobby. Modern irons are different than the ones that our mothers used. I'm going to show you how they work and how to eliminate the leaks. A steam iron has a water reservoir and every tank will have a fill line to show its capacity. And that line is different for every single iron. Now you may think it's better just to fill it up to the top and save yourself another trip to the tap. But we use irons in this position. So any water over the fill line will leak out either through the fill hole in front or leak down through the iron through the sole plate. So never fill the water reservoir higher than the fill line. If you do it by mistake, just dump it out. So let's take a look at how an iron works. We've already seen the water reservoir, and we all know about the sole plate on the bottom where all the heat comes from. Above the sole plate, there is a steam generating chamber. When the steam switch is turned to on, water flows from this tank to the chamber, and if the element is hot enough, steam is produced and flows out through these holes on the bottom. So if you just turn on your iron and you did not wait long enough for your iron to get hot, the water in the steam chamber cannot turn to steam and will leak out as water through the sole plate onto your ironing board. So give yourself time to let your iron heat up properly and keep your steam switch in the off position until you need it. A watched iron never heats up as fast as you want it to. So take a moment and do something else, like a five minute tidy up. Then your iron will be able to give you the heat that you need. For many of today's irons, but not all of them, they have a micro plumb or level sensor that can tell when your iron is horizontal or upright. So for these irons, not only do you need to have your steam switch on, you also need the unit to be horizontal for the water to flow down into the steam chamber. Unfortunately, that also means if you take a cold iron and fill the reservoir in the iron like this, the water will flow straight down into the chamber and then leak out the sole plate. So if you have this kind of iron, always fill it in an upright position and keep your steam switch in the off position until you need it. I know some ironing boards can be shaky and filling it in this position can feel more stable. So you might wanna take a look at my DIY ironing board. Not only is it stable, but it has all the storage underneath it. And since it's on wheels, it can move all about your sewing room or even into another room. I will leave a link to that video in the notes below so you can make one of your own. And if you're wondering, it's also this micro plumb or leveling sensor 
prevents most irons from doing that vertical steaming. When you do one pulse, it uses all the steam in the chamber and the sensor prevents any more water from entering the chamber until it's horizontal again. Before I go on to the next one, let me tell you about Blue Land. With the declutter challenge behind me, I've been cleaning my sewing room and dealing with all that stuff that's come out of my space. And I am determined in the coming year to be much more thoughtful about what comes into my home, including single-use plastics. I was so happy to find Blue Land last year. I had seen them on Shark Tank and thought, what a clever idea, because now all I need to clean my home are these cool little bobbin sized tablets. Blue Land believes that you can have it all in your everyday products. They are effective, convenient, safe to use, affordable, and sourced from clean ingredients. And this is how you use them. You fill your forever bottle with warm to hot water just below the watermark. Drop one of the tablets in the bottle. And honestly, this is one of my favorite parts. I love watching these tablets dissolve. And with no shaking or stirring, they are ready to use in minutes. Refills run about $2 a tablet, which is less than the average takeout coffee. Blue Land also uses no single use plastics in any of the components, including their packaging. Blue Land cleaners are CPA certified, which means the CPA scientists have evaluated every ingredient to be sure that it meets the safer choice stringent criteria. This is the essentials kit. And if you click on the link below, you'll get an additional no 20% off your first purchase. Every domestic steam iron user manual says remove the water after every single use, which you might think is optional or a waste of time, especially if you use it often. But now you know how the water flows through your iron. You'll realize as we store our irons and possibly flip them up and down, there is so much opportunity for cold water to flow down into that steam chamber and either leak out there or leak out through the fill hole. Leaving water to sit in the chamber also leads to corrosion. So if you've ever had brown water starting to drip out or you've shaken it and brown pieces flake out, that's the corrosion that leaving water in your iron causes. So do make the effort when you unplug your iron to turn the steam switch off, release the steam from the chamber, and dump out any excess water. To get the creases out of cotton, not only do you need a very high heat, but you also need water to break those micro bonds in the cellulose molecules. So steam settings were designed for cotton fabrics. However, not all fabrics need high temperatures. And as we know, for many fabrics, the high temperatures will actually melt or damage the fabric. So our irons are made with a variety of settings. So if you have your iron set at one of the lower heat settings, it's not as efficient for making steam, leading to water leaking out on your clothes or fabric. So turn off the steam when you are ironing silks and polyesters. Before you start, do a couple of pulses to clear the steam chamber and you are good to go. Your temperature setting can also be set too low in error. I know when I'm getting drops of water on my project, the first thing I do is check the dial on my iron. <laughs> it's amazing how often that can move. Either somebody else was using my iron or by mistake, I've rotated the wrong way. A pulse is an extra burst of steam from your iron through your sole plate. So the number of pulses that you can do in quick succession will depend on the size of your iron's steam chamber. But when it empties, it's going to take a period of time, maybe up to 30 seconds before the water in the chamber is hot enough to produce steam. So if you continue to pulse before that water reaches that high temperature, you'll get leaking water. So be patient, count to 20, and if you're in a hurry, use a spritz bottle. Irons used to require distilled water because it was pure. That is, there were no minerals dissolved in the water. Minerals in the water often lead to that white crusty stuff that we call lime scale. 
However, many years ago, manufacturers realized that it was just too much effort for most people to keep distilled water on hand. An anti-calc technology was developed to prevent lime scale service issues. Think of it like a magnet that keeps all those mineral ions agitated in the water so that it doesn't settle. Now, most modern irons recommend that you use tap water or bottled spring water. Some even expressly say do not use distilled water. So it's really important for you to check your irons user manual to be sure that you're using the right type of water for your brand and model of iron. How does distilled water actually cause the leaking? Distilled water, because it's pure, has a higher boiling point than tap water. So if you do not wait for your iron to heat up to that higher temperature, you may have leaks. As well, our irons work with a thermostat, which means that the element in the sole plate heats up till it reaches a high limit temperature. Then it turns off and cools down until it reaches a low limit temperature. So if you've caught your iron when it's cycled off and cooling down and is in that lower temperature range, it will take longer for your iron to heat the water in the steam chamber to that higher temperature. Where distilled water boils,